Daniel Marinson, what do you think uh, about what's happening in Egypt and the way the Obama administration has been handling it? Well, I mean, David, it, it is a fascinating issue because I think it, the U.S. is in a bit of a complicated situation. I think that, look, I, I, first of all, I think that the United States claims, at least has claimed for years, to support free and, and recognized democratic elections. Well, here we have a leader who was basically elected by the people in, in free, internationally recognized democratic elections, and he was deposed by the military in what is indisputably a coup d'etat, which is technical definition of which is the military forcing a freely elected president from power. Now, at the same time, I think that the United States takes the approach of A, we, we, we they, I think they were probably suspicious and worried about, about someone like Morsi, who is an Islamist, albeit perhaps not a, uh, not necessarily a radical Islamist. You know, it's not, it wasn't clear quite exactly how far he would be willing to take sort of a conservative brand of Islam in Egyptian society and what the ramifications would for the, that would be for the United States. Um, but obviously we see key vital interests in making sure that regardless of what happens, there is stability in Egypt. I think that I think that David that there there is there, there's a certain I think confusion by Americans as to what exactly is going on and whether just because the, if the people wanted the military to depose Morsi if the people supported this coup is it really a coup uh, is it something that America could support but frankly I think that the broader lesson to take away here is that look. We intervened in Egypt for 30 years on behalf of an autocrat. Now we've essentially more or less not objected to a military coup d'etat. And there are other countries that are, are weighing in on another side. This is very complicated stuff. People emerge from decades of dictatorship and in, in, in many cases one of the least educated, uh, still one of, one of the poorest countries in the world. And it takes them a really long time to develop the kinds of institutions that are capable of sustaining not just democracy, but liberal democracy, democracy that honors the rule of law and protects certain rights, particularly minority rights and, and rights of the individual. And so I think, I, personally, I think that what Americans are beginning to realize or should realize from the situation is that we're not always going to understand this and it's not always going to be our place to weigh in. And I'm a little bit concerned that it, the, the relative tacit support for the military coup, while it does reflect perhaps the majority will of the Egyptian people, uh, it certainly doesn't reflect the 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 perhaps the healthy evolution of the liberal democratic process in Egypt, and that the Islamist factions, whether it's the Muslim Brotherhood or other factions, will now be driven out of the political process into a kind of extra political, extra judicial uh, sort of status, much like the one that they held under Mubarak, and that will only radicalize them further and now that they are disempowered. Right. And, and that is something that, you know, the, the parallel may have been drawn in Pakistan, a, a cycle of mm -hmm. Islamist and, and secular military leaders, one recriminating against the next, uh, making, making it more extreme each time. So that's something to be concerned about. Great analysis, as always, by our own executive producer and host, Daniel Marin.